Good evening. Welcome to the Oconee County Board of Commissioners meeting. Today is uh, Tuesday, March the 7th. Yes. <laughs> if you're joining us virtually to comment during the public comment portions of the meeting, please use the raise hand feature in Zoom. After a moment of silence, we'll ask Holly to lead us in the pledge. Please stand. Yeah, our first item of business will be to approve the agenda. Make a motion. Wait, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Next time is any statements or remarks from citizens. This is anything not on the agenda tonight. Please come up and just state your name and where you live. Hello, I'm Fred Johnson. I live at uh, 1191 Cockroach Drive out in North High Shoals. I'm here to speak about the uh, speed platforms there. Shows. I just wanted to make a statement about them in favor of the speed platforms. Uh, the speed platforms on Hillsborough Road in North High Shoals I think they should remain in place uh, in accordance with past agreements between the city and county. In 2014, the uh, town of North High Shoals and the county came to an agreement that the city could place speed platforms on county roads that go through the city. It was acknowledged that Hillsborough Road was a county road, and the county's attorney's opinion at that time was that the city could place speed control devices on county roads within city limits. Uh, previous to this, the city had tried various platforms speed signs and increased patrols. Uh, none of those efforts stopped the speeding except for the platforms. Uh, Melvin Davis wrote to the city to say it could replace the platforms that had been removed due to paving. And that was to be the deal. And we would just, they'd be removed and replaced at our expense anytime the road was maintained. Uh, as former mayor Kim Kraling said to me last week, uh, we shouldn't have to fight this battle every decade. Uh, we'd like to just go with the agreement that has, has been done a decade ago. The city provides services to all county residents along Hillsborough. Uh, we pay for the removal of trees. We provide a park. We provide meeting places. Small groups like Boy Scouts meet there and sports teams and a lot of parenting groups. The majority of the people who use those facilities are non-county, non-city residents, and we happily welcome them, them there. Uh, what I'm asking the commissioners tonight is that they help keep Hillsborough safe for the people and facilities along Hillsborough Road and continue the policy of past county commissioners uh, which allowed the town of North High Shoals to maintain speed platforms on his boat road. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is John Wesman. I live at 221 Hillsborough Road on the corner of Hillsborough and Plantation. Have been there since 1984. Uh, I've seen the traffic increase. I've seen the speed increase. We go to the park. My wife walks down there daily. We have to walk in the ditch, not to get hit by a vehicle going down. There's no sidewalks. The cars zoom by her. You know, it's very dangerous. And I hope that somebody thinks that the speed bumps are definitely a necessary item because it's very hard to get out of your driveway in the morning to go to work because here comes the cars both ways from the school. We have all that traffic now, too. We've got buses. We've got 18 wheelers coming up and down the road. Trucks, delivery trucks coming up and down the road. There was, uh, they were doing a lot of construction. All the trucks, the dump trucks coming from the quarry, 30, 40 trucks a day in groups of threes and four at a time, just tr trying to get up the road. It's tearing up the road. It's about running. We've had a big accident with a truck, an 18 wheeler, hit another vehicle, sideswiped it because the roads are very thin, narrow in, in the lanes. It's just, and it's much too fast. I, I hope we'll, you'll continue to do what was done before, what was agreed before by if you fix the road, we have no problem putting speed humps back down here. It's just a no, it's just a thing that has to be done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone virtually? Any statements or remarks from commissioners? So our next Wednesday is next Tuesday, the 14th will be our uh, state of the county event 
you can register through the Chamber of Commerce for that. Uh, registration will end sometime tomorrow, I think it is. So be sure to sign up for that. Just a little, I guess a little backgrounds in order since we had some North High Shelves, North High Shelves folks show up. Um, we met with the mayor of North High Shoals. It was uh, Justin and I met over there with uh, a neighbor to North High Shoals Park about a drainage issue. <clears throat> so we went through the process, but we came back and kept, brought our county engineer and road guy back over there again, came up with some ideas on how to try to address the speed of the water as it crossed uh, the ditches. Uh, so if you're familiar with it, the, the ditch runs along Hillsborough Road and then curves back onto the to the city property. And the, the ditch has kind of grown in now. It's got old fencing. Um, we sent an estimate to the mayor about what it what it would cost to do that portion. Um, it's the county's belief that the city had taken control of that road when they installed the speed tables. There was some attempts in the 14 to talk about speed bumps. Um, and I think what was approved was the, the ones that had the spikes in it that allowed the water to flow through there. And that became problematic for the mayor at the time. So he pulled those up and then put the current speed bumps that are in the road down there. Um, when that occurred, there was conversations with the mayor that if they were going to put those type of speed tables down, then that would be their road, the city's road to take care of. I've gone back through everything we can find communication wise with the city of North High Shoals. I'd be happy to look at the whatever letter you're talking about from Chairman Davis. Um, but we got emails from our county staff going back to Chairman Davis about the problem at the problem with that that speed table. It's my understanding. We can't find any documents where the city of North, North High Shoals had that speed bump engineered or any documentation on the method in which it was installed. Um, in addition, I attended North High Shoals meeting uh, several months ago where the city charged uh, Cable East for access to the right of way, again, confirming I believe that it was a city road throughout the time. After we presented the the uh, estimate to the mayor, we get a letter from their the city attorney saying it is a county road and we need to take care of the, the drainage issue. Um, our attorney talked with city attorney. We thought things were moving along well. And then next thing we know, we get another call from the city attorney who wants to meet with the county attorney, myself, the mayor, and we also took along our county engineer. Um, during that conversation, uh, litigation from the, the city was mentioned several times. Um, what we came up with was we were going to consult with an outside engineer to come in and look at what needed to be happening in the roadway. In order to do that, um, we'd have to have access to their property to, to try to fix part of that drainage issue that may or may not be coming from the roadway side of it. Um, also, if we were going to have to perform the maintenance of the roadway, then that road would have to be turned back over to the county. In addition, whatever, fun, whatever money they collected for access to that right of way would need to be returned to the county. So I went to the next high school meeting last month and it happened to be on the agenda and it came up with discussion. We went through these very same points uh, with the full city council, at which time they voted to turn the road back over to the county and to return the $2,500. So we have consulted with an engineer. They started their preliminary review. He looked at the contours. It appears that approximately 23% of the road drainage of the drainage coming from the road goes through the onto the the city property and then on to Mr. S uh, to the neighbor's property when 83% of the flow is coming from 
actually of the the city park um, our count our policy in Oconee County is not to allow speed bumps on county roads um, and so that was discussed with the city council and they still chose to um, vote to turn the road back over to Oconee so we're We've offered to the city also if they would like to figure out any other kind of speed calming mechanisms, whether it be chicanes or or many roundabouts or whatever, we'd be more than happy to work with them on that. So right now we're waiting for the report back from the engineer. We'll have to talk with the adjacent property owner and then we'll bring that before the board to look at and talk about uh, what our next step is. But um, I'd, I'd love to see the letter that you're talking about. We, we pulled the open records request from the city, uh, requested all the information. We have letters dating back to the, um, when Chairman Dawson was, was chairman saying that speed bumps are not allowed. Uh, Mayor Thomas received those letters going all the way back. Uh, if there is such a letter, it was probably the one that had the stakes drawn in it because we do have communication from our county engineer at the time when the those were pulled up and the others were put down that that was going to be problematic uh, for Oconee County. So just stay tuned. Uh, we appreciate y'all coming out and, and talking with us, and we'll be at the next town hall meeting if y'all want to be there too and see what's going on from the city's standpoint. With that, our next item is to approve the minutes. This will be for our regular meeting on February 7th and our agenda setting meeting on February the 28th. We have a motion second, all in favor? Uh -huh. Thank you, motion carries. Next item is the presentation of the Georgia Department of Community Affairs plan first designation. Guy, you wanna do that or you wanna introduce our team? <laughs> Ms. Beth? I will, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, we have with us this evening, Beth Evanson. Uh, with TCA to present uh, the award to Oconee County. Hey, thank you for having me this evening. So DCA's Plan First program recognizes and rewards communities that have an established pattern of implementing their comprehensive plan. With that being said, on behalf of Governor Brian Kemp and Commissioner Christopher Nunn, I am happy to be here tonight to present you with your plan first designation that will be effective for the next three years. And congratulations, we are excited for you. Thank you. Now we're going to move on to our hearings and actions on zoning matters. Um, staff will have an unlimited amount of time to present. Those speaking for will have 30 minutes, and those speaking against will also have 30 minutes. After that, we'll close the uh, public comment section. The board can ask questions as they see fit, and then we'll make a decision based on the Unified Development Code. With that, we're going to call rezone our first rezone, which is rezone P22-0263. RNC Development Enterprises LLC. This is R1 to B1. This is 0.5 acres at Stonebridge Parkway. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Again, this is P220263, RNC Development Enterprises LLC. 
This is uh, approximately half an acre located on parcel B, a portion of parcel B06AA001. It's currently zoned R1 in the Civic Center character area. And again, the request is to rezone from R1 to B1 in order to develop the parcel as part of the stormwater management facility for the adjacent commercial uh, office development. <clears throat> You'll see the concept plan in your packet. Uh, this is the parcel that is subject to the rezone this evening, um, and it will be used for the remainder of the detention pond as this is built out. <clears throat> These are architectural images of the existing uh, office park. And staff recommends conditional approval uh, subject to our three standard conditions and planning commission recommends approval with the same conditions. Thank you. Now we'll hear from the owner or the agent of the owner. Brian. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, thank you for the opportunity today. Um, so we are the applicant slash agent for the current owners of the that little sliver, sliver of property. Um, our client is the um, purchaser of the property that you saw that's being developed. So the, the office park that's being developed. His plans are to put in three, well, basically build it out. We're not changing anything on the site. Parking, the, the landscaping, and the um, existing facilities stay the same. In our calculations, we found that the stormwater that's there doesn't, you know, the current management system doesn't meet. And so half the property drains to the south that will go into the, the, the new residential development down below. Um, and then the other half drains towards the street. And so that little section there that's drained towards the street is kind of what we're talking about. Water goes there now, it flows there now. What we're looking at is to, to enhance and enlarge that stormwater facility to handle that water that's going towards the street. And so in order to do that, we can put in a concrete pond, if you will, right there on the corner, but this little sliver makes it a whole lot uh, more aesthetic, uh, easier to, to access. And, um, and so that's really the request today is for that little strip so we can put in a stormwater management facility on that. So I'll be glad to answer any questions you have. We may have some in just a minute, thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak for the rezone? Anyone virtually? Does anyone wish to speak against? Anyone virtually? With that, we'll go ahead and close the public comments. Any questions from commissioners? Let me entertain a motion then. Uh, to be Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to please approve rezone request P22 0263 with condition. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. All right, next item is rezone request P22-0295. This is Halloran Masonry. Uh, changing conditions for approval of case number 6745. This is 7.11 acres located at 1619 New High Shoals Road. There's also a variance P22-0296 for the same property as well as a special use P22-0297. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Again, this is rezone P22-0295, variance P22-0296, and special use P22-0297. Uh, this is located on a portion of parcel B07G004 off the of New High Shoals Road and 441. Uh, it's currently zoned OBP in the community village character area. And again, the request is to change uh, conditions of the previous rezone, K6745 from OBP to OBP with approval for self storage use. Um, also for a special use approval to construct a self-storage facility under the existing OBP zoning. This is a principal use that is allowed by special use approval in the OBP zoning district, according to section 20511 of the ordinance. And then uh, finally, a variance to UDC section 806 to reduce the required buffer from 50 feet to 25 feet adjacent to the R1 property. 
this is the concept plan you have in your application packets. Um, slightly larger version, but uh, you'll notice uh, the subdivision with uh, the larger two story in the middle, uh, single story along 441, single along the subdivision, um, and two story in the middle. This is the subject portion of the rezone. This remains B2. And again, these are the architectural images submitted with the application. And staff recommends conditional approval with our standard three conditions. And number four, building facades shall match images one and three of the application submitted, uh, the architectural images that were submitted. And the Planning Commission recommends uh, uh, the variance, uh, sorry, the variance uh, the staff recommends does meet the, the approved uh, does meet all necessary conditions to grant the special exception uh, with the two conditions. One, our regular condition, and number two, per section 808043, the proposed eight foot tall limitation wood vinyl privacy fence located in the proposed 25 foot buffer would need to be relocated from the center of the buffer to be placed along the interior edge of the buffer such that any planted vegetation would be provided between the fence and the adjacent the residential subdivision property line. And then Planning Commission recommended approval of the uh, conditions of the special use and the zoning request. Thank you. Ms. Pittman. Good evening. Um, Frank Pittman um, with Pittman Agrarian Engineering at 1050 Barber Creek Drive. Um, here tonight representing the owner and the purchaser of 1619 New High Shoals Road. Um, as Mr. Herring mentioned, this this property is zoned OBP today. It was zoned, if you, a lot of you guys were probably on the commission when it was zoned previously. It was zoned for a, um, a, a brick contractor who was going to build his facility there with outdoor storage and, and the like. And he had plans for a couple of other lots that, that may be sold off for other offices. Um, Due to economic reasons and and being unable to sell some of these lots, um, he decided that he would stay where he was and and try to sell the whole property. One of the reasons that it it hadn't been economically viable for for office down there is because the the sewer isn't close by. The sewer's back over behind the aquatic center. Um, you'd have to um, run sewer all the way around there. This use that that we're proposing on the property today works on septic, so we don't have to try to get to the sewer over there. Um, this uh, this use is allowed under the existing OBP zoning, um, but but we're here to change the the binding plan to a to a self storage plan, uh, which also re requires a special use. Um, we feel that the use is good for the surrounding area as it produces very little traffic, um, as you all know that. That area is uh, has a lot of traffic, especially during school times. So it's, it won't be a hindrance for traffic. Um, I spoke about the sewer, and again, um, it would produce um, a substantial amount of tax revenue without putting kids in school and and having to be a burden on on the utilities of the county. Um, it does meet the existing zoning class and carried area, um, and and I would ask for your approval on the the rezone modification and the special use. Um, the variance request is is due to, and, and there's a little bit of information in the staff report, but along the western side of this property, there is an existing fiber optic line that goes through the property in a 20 foot easement. There's actually room on the other side to the west of that easement between the easement and the property line that ranges anywhere from seven to 15 feet. Then you've got a 20 foot easement. So we're, by the time you get over that, you're already 32 to 40 feet before you ever started with a buffer. And so we're asking for a reduction in the required buffer from 50 feet to 25, which would essentially actually give us 52 to 60 feet of buffer when you include the, the 20 foot um, easement for the for the fiber line and the area on the other side. And the fiber line area is wooded. So um, it, it would we would be giving the buffer that that is needed. It just doesn't quite meet the UDC requirement. Um, with that, I would ask for y'all's approval and I will reserve any time. I have left for any kind of questions or, or comments to address. Thank you. Thank you. 
Does anyone else wish to speak for the rezone, the variance, and the special use? Anyone virtually? Okay, we've got some signed up to speak against. Uh, Chris Harden. My name is Chris Harden. Um, I'm a property owner right against the, where the variance request is. Uh, I live at 1511 Choice Johnson Road, but that's in Melrose Court. And I, I would request that you don't change what with a 50 foot setback. I mean, it, it affects property values and that's my property there. And I'd rather it not change. I mean, I don't want stuff right up against it as best I can. Now, I don't, I just listened to the gentleman. I don't know what he's saying about it's going to increase the setback, but I'd rather not change the existing. Thank you. Chad Howard. Thank you. I don't have a PowerPoint or anyone to speak for me, so I'll do the best that I can. My name is Chad Howard. I live in the Thornwood subdivision. Um, that is the subdivision that is behind Westminster, um, as well as behind the aquatic center. As you pull out of my neighborhood, you will take a ride onto Bishop Farms Parkway and drive toward um, High Shoals Road. And as you come over the hill, the Aquatic Center is on the right-hand side, and you're facing High Shoals Road, and what you are facing is a two-story building, a two-story self-storage building. Um, an eight foot fence will not hide that. Uh, reducing the buffer will not hide that. That is not something that either one of you would like to see coming out of your subdivision in your neighborhood every single morning. Um, from what I, it sounds to me, the, the property was purchased in 2015. They've been able, unable to use it as zoned. They're trying to zone it uh, for self storage. Um, of which is not uniform to uh, the residents in the area, as well as it's saying commercial property. There's some undeveloped vacant land there. There's Farm 441 that lies adjacent to it. Um, the gentleman that just spoke, his subdivision backs up to it. I would not want a self-storage facility in my immediate backyard. That would uh, decrease our land values across the road is the United Methodist Church. And on the Bishop Farm side across the road in what would be the self-storage facility is the Aquatic Center. And next to that is Westminster. Farm 441, the church, the Aquatic Center, um, and Westminster, which is also expanding, I'm sure you're aware. I'll bring value back to the immediate residents and community there. A self-storage facility does not bring any value to the residents there. We're all homeowners. We have no use for self-storage. Um, it would only bring in typically uh, renters or people that are downsizing in homes that do not live in the area that are looking to place uh, their belongings in that. Um, so, the entities that are there provide a service to the immediate people in the area. This does not provide an immediate um, service or value to the area. Um, a traffic analysis was not done. Um, it was mentioned by the gentleman uh, for the project that traffic was already bad in the morning, um, that there would be minimal impact which uh, we do not know what that impact would be because there has not been a traffic analysis done because it didn't reach the 1,000 uh, car or trip threshold in order for an engineer to do the study. Um, we also do not know the traffic impact of the Westminster expansion, which would add students to the school, which in turn would add traffic along Bishop Farms and High Shoals. Um, I ask that you respectfully decline the request. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mike White. 
to say thank you to the board for hearing my comments. I live directly behind the uh, buffer that they're trying to reduce the limit from 50 to 25 feet. I didn't realize when I came to this meeting that the buffer setback was uh, 25 feet from the edge of the existing fiber easement. I re-looked at the plan, that does seem to be the case. However, um, the only point I would like to make to all the members of this board is that the reason that we have buffers in general is to preserve the value of the existing property before another developer comes in to put something on the adjacent property. So from my perspective, I would just like to say that I think that there's a reason we have the 50 foot buffer set back in place. And I would just like to ask you guys that you not consider reducing it from 50 to 25 feet because I do think it will end up lowering the property value. And I do think it'll end up um, making my backyard, you know, less attractive and um, pretty much all I have to say. Thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Does anyone else wish to speak against? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> no problem. Just state your name and where you're addressed. Well, and I own the house right behind the perspective cell storage, 1071 Melville's Court. And I would also like to speak against the reducing the buffer and keep the buffer at 50 feet just to preserve our property values and keep our backyards as attractive as they are now. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, sir. My name is Christopher Stevens. I am a property owner in the Mel Melrose Farm. Um, neighborhood i once you know if this uh variance and the buffer um requests are approved it will basically put the self-storage unit within feet of my property line um and it will impact the the you know value of my property um i respectfully request that you deny these uh, variances and the rezoning request um, uh, at this time. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes, sir. Scott Gordon, uh, 1070 Princeton Lane. It's also in the Thornwood subdivision. Um, I can't put it any better than the previous speakers. I just want to go on record that I'm opposed to the rezoning, um, and I have a, a question. I'm sure that the businessman has uh, determined the, the need, um, but we already have half a dozen self-storage facilities in Oconee County. I don't know if they're at capacity, but uh, I just question the need. Thank you. Do we have everyone virtually? With that, we'll go ahead and close the public comments this time. Any questions from commissioners? Oh, you want a rebuttal? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. I'll be brief. I just want to try, I guess I'll try to touch on some of the questions and comments that I heard. Um, I guess a few of the few of the gentlemen um, mentioned or, or talking about the buffer, and I want to make it clear that we're not asking to move this this development any closer to that subdivision than what the UDC requires. The UDC requires a 50 foot buffer between the development and the residential property. There, there is a sliver of no man's land that ranges from seven to 15 feet along the property line today. Then there's a, a 20 foot existing 20 foot easement. Then we're, we're asking for a reduction of 25 outside that. So we'll be anywhere from 52 to 60 feet, which is more than what the UDC requires as a buffer. Um, the reason for the request is because that technically by the UDC, that that fiber optic line can't run in the easement or in the buffer, excuse me. So we're the buffer has to slide completely outside that. But we're not asking to reduce anything that that the UDC would require. Um, as far as um, the, the comment or question about do we need more storage? Um, you know, this comes up a lot. And, and I'll say what I the same question came to the Planning Commission. 
yes, there are a handful of storage facilities in Oconee County. They're all completely full. Um, some of the people that own storage in Oconee County are looking to start other projects because they're full and they can't meet the demand um, that they have today. Um, so there are there are homeowners that are using it. They're not they're not all renters that use it. Um, as far as um, a traffic analysis, again, the the num the estimated numbers in the report are straight out of the the national traffic manuals. Um, the estimated traffic is 205 trips a day, um, which is significantly less than if this was built under the existing um, approved office park. Um, also, significantly less less than yes the the items that were listed out there out there but this you know there's also uh, a convenience store that's already approved on the corner adjacent to to this caddy corner um, on the thornwood side of the property as well so i mean this area is growing um it's already zoned ovp so we're again we're not asking to change any of the existing zoning class just just the use that was previously approved um so again i, I would ask for y'all's approval on these requests tonight thank you Good. With that, we'll close the public comments. Any questions for commissioners? I got a couple uh, for Mr. Herring. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Herring, on uh, with self storage facilities, uh, is it allowed in any zoning classification where it doesn't require special use? No. So, so nowhere in the county yeah. they can go. That's now, right. Is there any other use such as self storage that requires special use? It's not allowed in any zone that requires a special use. There, there probably are, but I can't you speak off the top of my head. I'm sorry. No, sir. No, sorry. Chicken houses, pig parlors. <laughs> right. <laughs> not in every zone. No, sir. <laughs> uh, now, the corner is zone B2. The, the initial rezone was done how long ago? I, before your time. Right, yes. So what 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 is designated going in that B2 zone? Yeah, I believe that was a convenience store. Convenience store. Mm -hmm. So so the people who are concerned I'm about sorry. It, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's correct. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. So so the B2 is a retail shopping retail. center, yes. So they can put that in tomorrow without coming back to us. That's correct. I just I say that so the neighborhood will know that. You're right. That That's it's correct. It's concept plan specific, and that okay. would be allowed. So corner, we're not talking about it. That's correct. Okay. All right. Now, um, the the fiber optic cable that runs along that side between the property and Melrose. Um, right. Does it? How long has that been there? Has it been there a while? Yeah, I'm trying to get to the map. I, I do not know how long that easement has been there. Frank, you know it's been there. I mean, it's completely wooded on top of it. It's been there as long as anybody knows about it. I worked on the original zoning of this eight years ago, and it's been there a long time before that. So. so in the original rezone, did you ask for a variance on the buffer then? I, I don't think so, no, sir. Okay, so that wasn't a problem. Back then, no, I don't, I don't remember there being discussion. I don't, I don't remember clearly, but I don't think so. Okay, so the initial rezone, there was no issue with 50 foot buffer on top of the 20 foot easement. I, I think that's it. Okay, all right. Now, uh, question uh, on the, the along 441, it calls for a, a, a landscape buffer. Is that correct? A landscape, a landscape strip. So huge. Yes, yeah. that's right. So it does not call for any kind of fencing or anything along right. that. It's just landscape. along this one. It's it's a, it's a landscape strip. That's correct. All right. So so there's nothing. But I, I do believe though that the code would require that that be enclosed in the in in a fence, the facility to be enclosed in a fence. Similar to the one that we did over on okay, so on, on on um, right, old didn't, 441. Okay, I did not see that on the right, but but the code would require that. So what's interesting is is that building. I guess it's building uh, 300. Yeah. So that would the back side of that would face 441. That's correct. What would that? Correct. So that would be this 
the back side of this building, which would be all brick. All right. Or stone, but brick or stone. Okay. All right. And so this, the question about as it's building 400 that runs along the property line with the homeowners would be the same. So the back side of that would be brick? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I've never seen a split level. Help me understand that. Does that mean that building down there is going to be two stories or Thomas? I believe that's the request, right? Yeah, yeah it'd be two stories on one side, one story on the other. Well, 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 wait a minute. That building right there, how big? Is that two no, stories? No, that's, that's not split level. That's a one story building. All right. Well, I'm sorry. I guess I read the plan. The, 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 the plan in the middle is the split level. All right. Well, it just said building 400 split level. That, that was not so All right, so what we were given is not correct. So building okay. 200 is a two-story, and the one in the middle? The one in the middle is the two-story. All right, and building 100 is single-story. This one? Right. Yes. So what if that's not split level at the end, what, which one is split level? The one that you call two-story. Okay. You so it's built on the slope, so it's two story on one side and one story on the other. Okay. Okay. So right. it's similar to the last one we did. Okay. All right. So so people that drive in on one side is going to be lower than another. Okay. All right. Got another question. Let me think about just so you can see. Oh, yeah, I do remember exactly. Guy in the in the um, application, the narrative. I haven't been here this long as the, my colleagues have, but this is the first time I've seen where the wording was each of which could be exterior or interior loaded. What what was? How does that play into what we're talking about tonight? Let's say that again. All right. The narrative. <laughs> the proposed use of the subject property at this time is to develop the track into up to three self-storage buildings, each of which could be exterior or interior loaded, and each of which could be up to two stories. Well, what does that mean? Well, they'll be bound by their concept plan. But so, and, and what they meant by that would be probably a good question for the applicant, but the concept plan would prevail. All right, so tell me how to go. Right, yes, sir. So that's the concept plan. That's correct, yeah. And it said that building 400 split and left. Right. But it's not. They're, they're telling us now that it's not, that's correct. So and what? so they're on record now saying that that's not. Okay. What year did the subdivision, and some of the folks in the audience, what, what year was that subdivision that backs up the project? What was the, is that the idea? So you folks were buying houses there in the 90s? Right. Next question is, was this uh, zone, correct me my name, but was this zone A1 before the, the, the current zone was done? My, my recollection is that I mean, this zone, this was only in 2002. So the resident saw a different project on the books is if they bought the property in the 2000s or 2000s right there. In 2015 was when it was rezoned from the, the AG to the uh, OBP and B2. Okay. So prior to 2015, it was it was so not a commercial use. So A1 That's right, A1. OBP. Right. Which is a property. 
So this is different than what a neighbor has known since they moved in. Okay. Well, that's the question about where it comes from. I think this is the difference is not that uh, you're changing the zone, it's just that the buffer is changing. Right. Well, there's a concept plan that was approved in 2015 that has to be amended, right, since we're concept plan specific. So that's the rezone part of it. Not changing from OVP, it's just that it's OVP with a new concept plan if it's approved. And and then there's the special use, which is required for any of our self-storage uh, uses. And then there's the variance uh, to that buffer uh, due to the, the, the easement that's within what would have been the buffer. Um, which obviously there can be no landscaping in that easement. Um, and so thus they're providing the landscaping outside of that easement on either side. But this the current zone is an event zone and that concept plan was done in 2015. That's correct. The, that's right. That's what we're coming back. Mm -hmm. um, but it was you know, I don't know if people were objected to it or what, but that, that's what was zoned at that time. And With the, the office and the outdoor storage, construction yard, concrete, yes. Sir. Okay. And this is different. This is different than what was on the books, what was voted on. So even with the buffer, use in OVP is different. That's that's another in my opinion a major issue. But that's not what I would say the neighbors accept because it, this one's a little bit this one's right on the property line. It's not across the street, it's not down the street. Some are right next to it. So that's Okay, uh, the original plans, of course, call for, as you said, the, the brick mason company. Right. And that was, so there's a site plan that is, has to appear to. That's correct. So for any use other than what was originally intended, it will have to come back to this board. That's correct. Correct. So what are typical other uses in the OBP designation? That's common. Uh, yeah, there, it's, a, it's a number of them. I mean, there, we, we, we have a, a lot of uses that are allowed in that office business park. So mm -hmm. similar similar to the outdoor storage or um, flex space warehousing. Um, if we just did one for uh, Kevin Price up on Jimmy Daniel, the OBP there. Um, so it's, it's more of that office combination with a storage yard with a um, a warehouse facility, that type of thing. So, and we come back to that. If we were coming back tonight for that instead of this, we'd still be dealing with a 50 foot buffer? Yes. What was called to be inside that? I know there's a possibility that the business, the brick, is that the only? I think there were other office uh, lots as well. I think that's what Frank had mentioned, but you know, primarily it was for that office space and the, uh, the storage yard and facility for uh, Howler and Macer. What's going to be the designation on signage for for this project? They, it would have to meet our sign ordinance, right? Well, I mean, is, is it going to be at the entrance there on the new high shows road, or is it right. going to be out there on Fourth? They they have double road fronts, so there could be one on each. 
If the original plan is to look at that as you know, the traffic count to suggest that the lower the bus to show it. Yeah, certainly. Or it would affect the traffic. Mm -hmm. would affect the traffic. That's correct. So I, I pulled up the 2015. It appears the 25, there is a 25 foot buffer from. Easy, you just like me. From twenty five foot up in the middle. That was easy. Oh, okay. Jordan. Probably here. Non shaded part might be. Why y'all looking at? I got a question real quick. So the eight foot, the eight foot tall decorative fence, from there to the eight foot tall imitation wood fence. How how much room is that from both fence to fence? So you wouldn't double them up. You would do. Well, I mean, on this here, it shows there's two fences going up. Well, it, we, because the, originally, what the UDC required for the buffer fence being the middle of the buffer. Okay. What five. Condition is, of course, to move it to the back side on, on the our side of the buffer so that it's got a lot more vegetation between the fence and the subdivision. If we move it to the entire side, we would not be doing that. Does that make sense? If you move the vinyl privacy fence, right, which, which is what the condition is, that would give it still the 50 foot buffer. That, that would move to our side of, of the buffer, is what he's. There's a condition that that staff is recommending. Okay, on the other so outside. So if it moves outside, so if the on the inside, on our side, so that all the vegetation will be on the subdivision side. Of the so if you if you look here, this shaded. Okay, I, I I think I must be reading wrong. The entire shaded area is 25 foot. Got you. I'm sorry. I'm, I and the, the fence the fence would require fence would be in the middle of that. But we're recommending that it be. So the fence would be on the development side of yeah. that 25. Foot. I got you. Okay. I understand that. Okay. I'm okay. Sorry. Good. So it appears the 2015 plan only had a 25 foot planted buffer, similar to what happening now so i don't think that distance but it's still guy it's still 50 feet from the property line that's correct at least it's just that 10 that 20 foot can't be planted because of the easement and so right. so the, the easing would be on the 25 if the cable if the fiber line didn't have an easement the buffer would actually be closer somewhat yes but uh, it, could it, be, it wouldn't necessarily yeah it would the variance would not be necessary okay uh, without the easement I guess for clarification, since this plan already has a 25 foot, why are we required to do an additional variance to that? If it's, you're not changing any of the buffer requirements. Why is that? Well, the use has changed. I mean, it's based on the use. I think the UDC has changed. I think the UDC used to have required 25 feet. I think the UDC has changed since this thing was put on buffer. Well, the, it's the uses uh, determine the buffer, not the zone, right? So, um, an office use would be the the, the twenty five. The um, the commercial use would be the fifty. So, 
I think with an outdoor storage use like was presented in 2015, a, a 50 foot buffer would have been necessitated. As to why there was no variance required at that time, I, I can't say. So I wonder if there's different variances, there's different buffer widths depending on the use. That's correct. Yes, sir. That's correct. The, you know, the buffer width is based on the use. And the load is always the top part. That's correct. So I got a question about the loading in front of this one we wanted to do. Um, where it said internal or external yeah. that goes back to what parts. <clears throat> is this Lower section is going to be a vegetable buffer. Is that going to be loaded on the back side as well as the? No, that would only be single loaded on the on the okay. development side. Nothing would be loaded on the subdivision side. the 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 con the the comment in the report that Mr. Harden was was asking about is some some buildings. Some buildings may end up being climate controlled. If they're climate controlled, then that's interior loaded. So you may have one door going into the building with hallways inside. And that would be what interior loaded is. Exterior loaded would be the doors on the outside. So the reason that's in there is so that they can determine based on demand how much of each of those they, they build. Some may be exterior loaded, some may be interior loaded, but they're not exterior to the project. They're exterior going into the build the units be exterior but nothing would be loaded from the subdivision side no sir so the facade is going to be all that with it there it'd be brick or brick or stone i mean that udc requires all non-residential buildings to 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 have that already so that it, it wouldn't be a metal building or anything like that right Any other questions? Okay. All right, we'll take the rezone request P22-0295 first. I make a uh, I make a motion we we uh, approve rezone P22-0295 Allerand Masonry Incorporated change of conditions approval for case 6745 plus or minus 7.1 acres 1619 Hashard Road with four conditions. Second. Here we have a motion and a second to approve rezone P22-0295 with four conditions. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye, motion carries. Next item is variance number P22-0296. I'll make a motion to approve variance P22-0296 as a second. Here we have a motion to second to approve variance P22-0296 with two conditions. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Next item is special use P22-0297. Make a motion to approve P22-0297. Special use approved for self-storage and OVP plus or minus 7.11 acres, 1690 New High Shelf Road with the two conditions. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve special use P22-0297 with two conditions. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye, motion carries. Next item will be variance number P22-016. This is Richard Edward and Karen Jennifer Maxson. This is a hardship variance for single family residential with accessory structure, 2.89 acres at 1544 Edgewater Road. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, this is um, variance P23-0016. Uh, Richard Edward, Jennifer Maxson. This is located uh, at on Edgewater Drive, um, parcel number A03D015. It's 
currently zoned AR in rural places character area. And again, the request is a uh, variance from UDC section 1304 hardship variances in section 34701 relationship to the principal use to construct an accessory building garage in the front yard of the existing principal structure. You have the concept plan in your application packet showing the proposed uh, accessory structure at this location. Another version, the architectural image is submitted with the application. And staff recommends a uh, conditional approval with the one condition. Thank you. Hey. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Board of Commissioners. Good to see you all. It's been a while. I hope y'all doing well. Um, I'm here on behalf of the owners, um, Abe Abuhamdan, for the record, uh, with ABE Consulting. Um, 1601 Robin Hood Road. That's where I reside. Um, so the request before you is really straightforward. When you look at the variance, it was put in place to look at conditions such as what we have here. Um, the house, a lot of folks like to, when I had some acreage, they put the house as far back from the right away as possible just to, so they're not really near the traffic and everything and just have some privacy. And if you glanced at the aerial, uh, that, uh, Mr. Hearing had, I'll show you that this house in particular sits further than majority of the houses sitting next to it. And uh, maybe that there's that's that one. And so you could see here, let's see how they sit so far back away from the rest of them. And, and what we're proposing to do is put that two car garage accessory building right here. No, no bedrooms, nothing, no um, mother in law suite. So, really simply, uh, there is a turn. There's already a turn and a turn out in the concrete that uh, that this is where we're right there. There's already a concrete turn out into this area. And you could see we're trying to propose to put this in the middle of a, a tree area and keeping a lot of vegetation on the front. So it meets all the requirements in terms of hardship because they've had a septic system here. It failed. They put a second septic system behind and there's a pool and deck and beyond that there is a hundred foot conservation corridor they can't encroach on and there's also a creek buffer as well so this area is out of out of reach really to put a structure for that for the hardship so the only area reserved really for the septic would be here and that really made us come in before you to, to ask for the hardship uh, case here and the building itself is very attractive. Uh, you've seen the house, it's, it's a really beautiful home and they're trying to do it similar to what they have uh, and to match an architecture and, and uh, keep that uh, uh, beautiful property uh, with the, that kind of structure proposed. But as it sits um, right here, that's, that's no close than most of the houses really. That's 80 feet plus from the right away. So it's a quite ways in, so we, with that, Mr. Chairman, Board of Commissioners, we ask for your approval. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak for the variance? Anyone virtually? Does anyone wish to speak against? Anyone virtually? With that, we're going to close public comments. Any questions from commissioners? We'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Variance P23-0016. We have a motion to second to approve variance P22-0016. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Does any commissioner wish any item to be removed from consent agenda? With that will entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda as submitted. We have a motion and second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. We do have a need of an executive session to discuss land acquisition, personnel, and litigation. Make a motion to go in executive session to discuss land acquisition, personnel matters, and potential litigation. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Yeah. Yeah. 
Hope that. All right, we need a motion to go back into regular session. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. We are in regular session. Mr. Haygood. Two things. Um, the first is a resolution agreeing to participate in the National Tiva Allegan CVS Walgreens and Walmart settlements. Uh, in the opioid cases, there's $20 billion. It would be handled almost identically to the, um, the previous settlements. Uh, the MOU has not been approved yet between the state of Georgia and the participating cities and counties, but we anticipate that that, that being done shortly. And this agreement authorizes John as chairman to sign anything, including this resolution, that would need to be signed to participate in those, uh, in those settlements. Um, somewhat more money, I think, than in the last settlement, probably be structured the same way where we get funds over the next six or seven years. So I, what I'd ask for is a, a motion approving the resolution. Second. There we have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, motion carries. Uh, second thing is the settlement agreement between Donald Hammett and the county on the rezone out at Oak County Crossing. Um, the settlement agreement would provide that the uh, the matter would come back in front of the board. Um, it would show a revised site plan uh, providing for additional buffers and uh, some other matters. Um, and that would happen either at the April or the May meeting, depending on how long it takes the process to go through. But it would not go back for the planning commission, just in front of the board of commissioners. So a motion to approve the settlement agreement, which, as I said, is pending the board then considering the matter again as a reason. So moved. Second. Okay. We have a motion second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. Motion carries. With that, Commissioner Saxon. Motion to adjourn. Second. We are adjourned. <laughs>